So Clovis is... Is that a French name? A French name, you know, it was the name of the, um, of the, I would say, the one of the most famous uh, king of France. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe the most famous king of France. I don't you know, know him. Yeah, it was uh, back uh, almost uh, 15 centuries ago. Wow, interesting. And he's the, he's the, uh, <coughs> he was not, at the time, at the time it was not France, but it was uh, the Frank nation. Mm -hmm. The, the Frankish nation, you know, and Clovis was the the, 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 the big king, you know, who united different kingdoms, and also was the first king to turn uh, Christian. Really, that's interesting. So, yeah. so the, uh, let's start this. Hey, welcome to the Continuing Winemaker Series here at the Wine of the Month Club. We are honored and, and just excited to have, really, sh uh, French Champagne Royalty. I'm going to call you Royalty. Yeah, I'm not a royal. <laughs> you're, you're, you're too kind, you know. This is Clovis Tatinger, and we were just talking about uh, his name because I wanted to know if it was a French name, and it was. That's why I say it's royalty because mm. it was named after a French king. Yeah, Clovis was probably the most. Uh, he's one of the most famous uh, king of France. Yes. You know, uh, back uh, most 16 centuries ago, and uh, he gave uh, he gave basically the name uh, uh, France to uh, to the country because he was king of Franks. And he was the first king to turn a Christian. That's very interesting. Yeah. So it was was at that time, what we know as France, mm -hmm. was it were there different enclaves or different mm -hmm. areas? That yeah, were different it was kings? The, yeah different. Uh, it was the you know when the um, uh, Roman Empire collapsed. Yes, it was the return of the barbarian kingdoms. You oh know? right, yeah, okay. So and uh, the Franks were barbarian uh, kingdom. Yep. And, and uh, until they, they turned Christian, you know. Yeah, so that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was, and so were there more than one kingdom in, the, in that? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, different, different Frank, Frankish nations. Yes. And uh, Clovis, basically, King Clovis, uh, got uh, the three tribes of Franks united together. Yes, wow. And uh, he gave more or less the same, uh, he gave more or less the borders of uh, yes. uh, the, the, the current <coughs> borders of France. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. all the cathedrals, Cathedral de Chartres, Notre Dame, is that from yeah, that era? No. No, no, no. It, it, it comes, uh, it comes, uh, it comes uh, a bit afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but Clovis, you know, by becoming, by turning Christian, you know, yes. uh, I would say maybe uh, <coughs> by turning Christian was the, the first uh, push yes, for the development for of the. Right. The, the churches, you know, right. and so on, the spiritual life in, uh, yes. in France. That's amazing. What an interesting yeah. story. I have to, I got to look him up. Yeah. Because <laughs> the most important person I know, uh, besides, you know, Napoleon, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Catherine de' Medici. The, yeah, the, the, she was, uh, she was, uh, she's uh, one of the great person of the French, uh, yes. French yeah. Italian history as yeah. well, you know. The food. Uh, the food, but also, uh, I would say, you, in the history of France, you know, uh, if uh, you you summarize you know quickly you know very quickly you know you have uh, you have you have Clovis mm -hmm. Charlemagne Charlemagne uh, Carolus Magnus you have uh, Philippe Auguste Saint Louis Louis the Fourteenth mm -hmm. Napoleon Charles de Gaulle right. and that's all that's but it. Clovis uh, Clovis was really the I would say the beginning is the, the beginner yeah. yeah but we have to we have to acknowledge Auguste Escoffier you know. Auguste Escobier, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we brought today some interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll taste and we'll talk. Mm. Um, you mentioned that you'd been with the t your a Tatinger, so it's mm. your family, but actually with the with the company yes. ten years. Uh, I took over the company uh, yes ten eleven years ago, when my father and his, uh, and his family bought back the company. You know, uh, bought back the company. So they asked me to join the to join the business, you know, to uh, not only continue the story but also to uh, to develop it. Yep. Me and my sister, my sister and myself, and uh, and this is what we are doing, you know, every day, you know, by uh, by doing great wines, by uh, by uh, by uh, being uh, giving the the company and the teams more passion, more energy. And you work with your sister. Yeah, I work with my How father and my sister. That I can work with my father. You saw the picture. Yeah. But my sister, I don't know if I could do that. Is it working out okay? Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I tell you uh, something. First of all, my, my sister, she's extremely lovable. Mm -hmm. Extremely lovable. 
So for me, you know, it's a, it's really it's, a, bad, no. it's really a pleasure. That's great. And the, and the second thing, you know, we bought our company back, you know, uh, uh, the very high price, you know. So we can't afford to fight. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's a good, there must be a French so, saying that says that. Or yeah, I don't, I don't. I think you know we can't afford. We can't afford to fight. Uh, like yeah, that. so uh, very clever. So this and, sh and champagne is not about fight. No, it's not. Champagne is about is about pleasure and yeah. love. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's right. let's let, let's the fight to the politicians, you know. Yes. And let's keep on <laughs> on. Uh, we won't discuss French politics today. Yeah. So this is the Brut. Uh, Chardonnay, Pinot, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Mm. So all the wines of Tetanger, they're really um, built on the same um, on the same idea of champagne, you know, which is um, which is um, to to produce a very stylish champagne, very elegant, very feminine champagne. Tetanger, we don't mm -hmm. like big wines. We like very clean wines, very elegant, very feminine, and the trademark of Tetanger. And uh, that is why Tetanger became extremely famous. Is the Chardonnay. Tetanger was the first family, the first company, to uh, make wines apart from Chardonnay. Really, it's very pure, That's very, very uh, so the, with no barriers, mm. with no uh, no uh, to concentrate the 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 the, 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 the true quality of the mm -hmm. fruit. You know the the inner the inner character, the inner qualities of the fruit. And Tetanger has created the Chardonnay style. Through the brut, through the Comte de Champagne Blanc de Blanc, and uh, and Tetanger is is a, is a beacon, you know, of uh, of very stylish wines, of very uh, very delicate wines, you know, very easy wines to drink, you know, not easy wines to make, but easy wines to drink, no, and uh, and Tetanger really, I mean, um, wherever you are in the world, you know, from LA <laughs> to Beijing to Tokyo to Paris, you know, it's really always synonymous of lightness, of balance. Of uh, of uh, elegance, you know. This is what we are trying to do uh, every day when we make wines. And you're doing it because, mm. to me, uh, this is very soft on the. Yeah, palate. it's extremely soft. It's yeah. Very soft on the palate, and the and the character goes all the way through the wine, mm. and the balance is, is impeccable. So it's uh, Chardonnay was sixty forty, so seventy thirty. What? Mm, Chardonnay, Chardonnay accounts for forty five percent of the blend, you know. Then maybe a thirty percent of Pinot Noir. Mm. But very light Pinot Noir, and, very, and then after the rest is Pinot Meunier. But when you drink it, it's very soft, it's very elegant. You know, very in soft. this wine, you know, you have a, I mean, it's a wine which is made about 40 or 50 different crews, four different years, only, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's four years on the lease. So, you know, it's really impeccable. You that's know, amazing. It's really, uh, it's four years on the lease. Almost, yes. Wow. Well, can, between it comes three, out in the character. Between three and four, yeah. And the passion is there. Mm. You can taste the passion. As you know, it's uh, it's our name. It's our uh, it's our credit. It's our signature. It's our guarantee behind every bottle. So uh, for me, it's very important. That's uh, what I'm, I'm enthused by is that the the you know you always talk about the size of the bubbles, but that's not the important part. Is that the the, the way it feels, the mm. weight. And that comes from the bubbles, of course. Yeah. But the way it feels on your tongue is really special. You know, you can drink it you know, from the morning to the morning. Yeah, that's right. Well, we should drink it from the morning to the morning. It will, uh, it will light, you, uh, light you up, you know, uh, all the time. <laughs> so this is the... Uh, the Folie, Folie, de Folie, Folie de la Marqueterie. Folie de la Marqueterie is, uh, is one of the little baby of Tétinger, one of the, the last babies of Tétinger. I mm. mean... Uh, I mean, uh, it's a bit uh, a baby apart from the classic range of Tetanger, which is mostly Chardonnay driven. This one is uh, mostly Pinot Noir driven, uh, of course, with lots of Chardonnay. But it's an estate wine. It's a wine which is a, a tribute to uh, the, the first estate we, uh, we bought in Champagne back in the 30s. And this estate is, uh, is um, called Chateau de la Marqueterie, mm -hmm. Castle of la Marqueterie, which is located in Pierry, a village uh, close, very close, stick to Epernay, uh, one of the main cities of Champagne. And Chateau de la Marqueterie is one of the oldest castles of, uh, of Champagne, where they were producing wine since the early days. And really, this wine, it's, a, it's made only on this estate. And really, you know, uh, it's a tribute, you know, to the old style of Champagne, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of uh, élevage in barrique, you know, mm -hmm. a bit of... Uh, 
but very, very, very light, you know, very, very old, big barracks, you know, for micro, uh, to give a bit of micro oxygenation, you know, it's a bit more... Uh, I get that. A bit more uh, ample yes. than the Brut Reserve, yes. than the BLF, Brut La Française, but, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still very detached, it's very light, very elegant. Uh, that's very so, easy. So, so, you went to, there's something rattling here. You went to... Uh, you wow. went to school in yes. Paris yes. Uh, to study business and finance. To study history first. Oh, history. Yeah. I did a master in history. Would that be French history, of course? Uh, or see, world history? Um, world, uh, French. French and, of course, world history. Yeah. France is the world. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we all know this. Everybody knows this. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Because <laughs> we were I mean, in, we were in um, Bordeaux. Me, we had yeah. lunch with a... a, a University professor, mm -hmm. at the University of Bordeaux, who's, who taught American politics. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very interesting. So in this in this school in history, you study America mm. a little bit yeah, of everything. We, we, we study America actually. We study America because you are you are uh, I would say you are also uh, our life uh, in many ways. You are also uh, yes our everyday life, but. Uh, you, you can basically choose whatever you want, you yes, know. Uh, I see. You can you can study about the Romans, the Greeks, you know, and uh, right, right, right. you know you can focus on the. But you are, uh, you know, I think French and American, you know, are kind of uh, are brothers, you know. Yeah, uh, I agree. You know, in terms of uh, in terms of culture, in terms of life, in terms of li uh, lifestyle, you know, everything, you know. Um, so then you went into finance afterwards. Yeah, yeah. As a profession. As a as is, a profession, yes. Yeah. And then you decided. I'm gonna then I've been join a I've been called by the, the family yes to to took over the the company. And I don't uh, and I don't regret it. Yeah, no, of course. There's something about working in the family business, uh, and it takes a risk. It takes an amount of uh, fortitude. Uh, you know, I've, this is my thirtieth year here myself, mm -hmm. and. Um, I made a deal with my father in 1988. Mm. He still gets paid every month, mm. and you know he still consults with me. And it's uh, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, it's just a great decision. Yeah, yeah, but I think you know uh, you do it by uh, you do it by passion. You know, when it's your passion, you know you. Uh, I mean, uh, it's good. You know, um, you know, family business. Sometimes there are a lot uh, people are uh, are, um, are always you know uh, spitting on. You know, and yes. they say. Uh, it's uh, not uh, fashionable anymore, and so on. But still, you know, uh, it has a sense. And I think more and more, you know, uh, maybe uh, my kids, you know, they would like to be a, a medic, a doctor, yes. you know, whatsoever. I'd like one of them, you know, to took over the company, you know. Uh, and it's, it's not a bad company, it's a good company. Any and, interest uh, on that part? The kids interested? My kids aren't that interested. Yeah, yeah, I will see, you know, <laughs> we'll see. You know, we'll it's see a bit too, uh, too A little early, early now. Yeah, yeah. I found this intoxicating, uh, this this champagne. Um, a little bit of oak, uh, but mostly Surlis. It, mostly it's, the, the character comes from the... The, the Comte de Champagne is um, is really the one of the, Ooh, I would say, is one, is, um, one of the flagship, you know, of the French wines, you know. Like uh, Chateau Margaux is for Bordeaux, an right. iconic wine, Comte de Champagne, Blanc de Blanc. Is a is a flat, is an iconic wine for Champagne, you know, and it's uh, the, the I would say the greatest blanc de blanc ever made after the Second World War. It has been created in 1952 yeah, as a tribute to the Comte de Champagne, who, right. who was a, a legendary uh, poet, a legendary uh, the count is, means count, no count, yes, yeah. like a prince or yes, duke, right. or it's right. a. And it was a real family, and the Comte of Champagne, you know, was very well known to be one of the most important poets of the 13th century, one of the most important crusaders as well. And when he went back from the crusade, you know, with the group, with uh, with the knights, uh, he brought he brought on the French soil, you know, the ancestor of the Chardonnay plant, and we decided really? to uh, to pay him a tribute by making the first great blanc de blanc of the modern era of Champagne. It's only the five top Grand Cru's of Champagne, uh, of uh, Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, so really the, the, the best Chardonnays of Champagne, which are located in the Côte des Blancs. Uh, so uh, villages like Aï, Bouzy, uh, no, Aï, Chouy, Cramont, Auger, Ménil-sur-Auger. 
So really the, the five um, top uh, top villages of the Côte des Blancs, and this is all about Chardonnay. Chardonnay, so the essence of Chardonnay. I mean, so here you find back, you know, the minerali minerality that comes from the chalky soil of the Côte des Blancs. You find mm -hmm. the, the wild the, the the wild the wildness. You know, it's a very wild, very pure champagne. You know, mm -hmm. when you're drinking uh, Comme de Champagne, you know, it goes in, into you. You know, it's invigorating. It gives you the power. You know, uh, and it's a, it's a very I would say it's a very it's a very elegant wine. You know, with but with the energy of the Chardonnay, with the drive of the Chardonnay, you know. <coughs> it's a never-ending... Uh, it's really just... Uh, vi 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 uh, vivacity. It's yes. a never-ending uh, uh, life in life. it. Life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, it's considered by all the, the, the critics, you know, in the world, you know, like... <coughs> it's incredible. One of the very, very, very best Blanc de Blanc. And it's very uh, complicated. It's very complex, particularly since it's 100% Chardonnay. Uh, and I mean, I'm getting now when you said that the chalky soil, I get I can get feeling this, yeah. now, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's really, um, and then the Comte <coughs> de Champagne, you know, it's really, um, it's only in the best year. It's a very, um, it's a very exclusive production. We don't, I mean, it's only five villages and only the best parcel, only the best years. <coughs> Amazing. So it's really, uh, it's very rare, to, difficult to make and rare to make. Now, are you in the vineyards out picking the grapes and looking at the grapes and uh, I, testing I, the grapes? I, I, yes, testing the grapes, yes, yes, for sure. Uh, I won't be lying to you, picking no. not anymore. <laughs> no, I can understand that. But, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, uh, testing the grapes, you know, uh, together with the teams, you know, and so on, yeah, for sure. I mean, together with our... Uh, That's fascinating. Because Tétanger, only a uh, uh, few people know, but Tétanger is not only a grand mark, one of the top grand yes, marks in the right. world, not only one of the fam one of the last family-owned company in the world for champagne, but it's also we are big, we are great growers. Tétanger, we own uh, almost 900 acres of uh, of, uh, of land, and uh, and this is uh, and this is uh, and this is um, this is something which is very important. Tétanger, we are we are growers, we are artisans, and uh, so I spend a lot of time with uh, with our teams. Uh, you know, You're farmers, farmers really. Yeah, farmers. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and so we are engaged into uh, the whole uh, process. You know, of the green revolution. You know, uh, the sustainability. You know, and so on. You know, that's something which is, uh, I mean, which we are already uh, engaged in uh, decades. So in the, in in Champagne, the, <coughs> the movement in Burgundy, uh, part of Bordeaux, um, is biodynamic farming. Is this something that you think? works with the champagne process because you know the, the grapes are picked at different times and they need to be a certain size is that something that's happening there or not yet organic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh, to be very frank you know uh, i mean uh, i mean there, is it there, difficult there, with, with champagne with yeah yeah it's it's uh, i would say it's almost um i mean everything is possible but in this case it's almost uh, impossible where Champagne is really located, you know, in the most northern part of Europe, you know, in terms of vineyards yes, and so on. Right, sure. So uh, the climatic, you know, uh, conditions are not the same as can Burgundy can be, or Rhone, or Bordeaux, or Spain, or Portugal, or whatsoever. Yes. So uh, I won't say organic or uh, even more biodynamic. Bi bi biodynamic yeah. is impossible. But it's difficult. always it's difficult. Let's call it difficult for a result which is not uh, great. Uh, so yes, yeah, sustainable very much. And I think from a... Yeah, sustainable very much. Sustainable, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's a great policy, mm. you know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know in America. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have, uh, we have organic vineyards. We have, uh, we have uh, biodynamic. To a certain extent, biodynamic, biodynamic. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, we, we just, you know, uh, I would say, you know, uh, I mean, we we uh, we really we re you know we really treasure the I would say the, the what well, technique what techniques what technology can bring you as well you know sure of course and uh, well, the, that's the, the thing the, we don't we don't buy yet the wine seems to, I mean that you get the, the thing about the only difference that I see is the terroir and you, you already have the terroir for these wines you taste mm. the terroir yeah already, right and that's 
that's the difference for me when it comes to biodynamic. And it's it's a small percentage of wines, but uh, organic, yeah, I don't, you know what. I Again, don't you know, I, I think you know. Uh, it's not that interesting. We we don't have to be. Uh, you know, it's not being uh, uh, for or against. You know, I think we are all uh, we are all very conscious. Yes. You know about of nature, course. about also our, our consumer as well. Yes. That I mean, I, 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 I drink every day two bottles of champagne. Yeah, but they sell. So I don't want like to... Like the poster. Um, yeah, exactly. Like the Bézier poster. So <laughs> I, 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 don't want, I don't want to... Uh, I, I don't want to kill myself as well. Well, of course, know. but that's not, what, that's not what... We know that's not what's happening, right? Just, no, no, but just you know... Uh, but uh, it's important, but you know, we're very concerned, you know, as citizens, as also, uh, as also an agricultural company. Sure. We, we just try, you know, to, to make our best, you know, uh, for every, every decision yeah. we make. So this is uh, the Tetergé Rosé, mostly Pinot Noir. Yeah, no, mostly Chardonnay. Yeah, so still. Uh, Chardonnay, you know, it's, it's a big, big, very fresh. Uh, mm -hmm. you, the, the, again, the weight on the palate is great. Yeah, exactly. All the wines are very balanced, you know. And so the Chardonnay backbone, you know, which brings the citrusy, the lemony character, and mm -hmm. so on. And then the Pinot Noir, you know, which comes as well from under the. Uh, as red wine, yes. Pinot Noir from Champagne. Sure. So we are mixing. We are to the white wine. We are mixing. You know, uh, we, we are adding twelve percent of red wine from Pinot Noir, top red wine. Are they still we red wine? Are they regular still red wines yeah, at regular, that point? Yeah, yeah, okay. regular still red wine. Yeah. Makes from the grapes, the Pinot Noir of Champagne, yeah. and uh, which which brings you know the the, f the fruitiness to the wine. You know, the the, the red berries mm -hmm. character and mm -hmm. so on, mixed with the Chardonnay and so on. Gives a great balance, you know. It's very pure, very. It's very good. Also, very good. also very good. How about that? <laughs> it's also very good, you know. Tetergé so, is a Tetergé is a very. Um, so the Americans. It's a top are, quality signature. Of course, well, the Americans will say Tetergé, it's Tetergé. Well, which is fine. Tetergé, Tetergé. Pas de problème. No, no. Whatever, whatever, you know. Um, you should feel very comfortable, you know, with yes, the, uh, of course, with the way you pronounce things, you know. Well, I get very, you know, no with, more my, with my lessons, I get very defensive about it. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 uh, no more lessons, you know. Uh, yeah, right. You should enjoy the, the pleasure, Just the way you feel, you know. Uh, be relaxed. So you have uh, uh, another trip after this. You're headed to where? After you've been in our, in a, you've been in the United States how long already? Uh, I just <coughs> arrived uh, yesterday night. Oh, oh wow! Okay. <laughs> So yeah, Los Angeles tomorrow. We're going to see you know, tomorrow night. Uh, two, yeah, yeah. And, and then tomorrow, uh, San Francisco. Then San after, Francisco. I would be a small tour within the U.S. Really? So you go East Coast too? Chicago, no? Chicago, New York, York Boston. Well, oh, the whole thing. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Miami. In New York, do you know what you? Vegas. Do you, do you know what your schedule is in New York yet? Uh, no. no. You know, I'm totally free. I do nothing. So I don't work. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's not <laughs> bad, right? Because. Uh, Ma fille, est, elle est en, en boulanger de, uh, New York. Mm -hmm. She's a chef. She's a French. She's a baking chef. Mm -hmm. At a couple of restaurants there, and if, I'll, I'll give you the names in case you're with pleasure. If you have a chance to swing by, yeah, she loves it. She loves champagne. She she was trained. Um, she went to um, Alain Ducasse's school, uh, Yves Saint Jean, à côté de Lyon. She has a, she has a good teacher. Yeah, she's pretty good, no? Uh, and she baked in Paris for a little while. It's pretty she speaks French as well. And she does. She likes to speak French yeah. as well. Not, that's not, well's not the word. Oh, you, okay. you, you, speak, you speak well, my friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was a great pleasure having you here, Clovis. Thank you, Paul. Look forward to seeing you again sometime. With pleasure. Either out there or here. Brain champagne, you know. Okay. Come, come to see me. Very good. Cheers. Cheers.